Hello everyone here and welcome to my first ever official Q&A. And I am looking forward to doing this because there's a lot of good questions here. And I hope everyone enjoys and got all their uh, uh, questions answered. If you have any more or if you want any clarifications, go ahead and leave it down in the comments down below. But let's go ahead and start off with our first question. What got you into anime or visual novels? So, my very first anime I watched was uh, Gurren Lagann. And, my god. Well, I, I shouldn't say first one, because I should say, like, oh, they're just your typical Yu-Gi-Oh! Pokemon. Uh, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, GT as well. Very, very late into that. But those were my first official ones. But I would say Gurren Lagann was the first one. I knew it was an anime, and I wanted to watch it. Oh, it was uh, 2011, I want to say. 2012, I watched it. It was a really long time ago. Visual novels? Um, Danganronpa? <laughs> that's, that's what got me into it. Uh, why I did is I just heard people talking about it on YouTube. I don't even remember the video now. But just the way it was described, I just thought it was going to be really fucking cool. And it really was. And I'm glad that it was the first anime I watched because I really wanted to see that, and I'm glad I did. What's your favorite anime and game? This also came up as well uh, later on. But I would say my favorite anime is... It's such a hard question. I would probably say, just for nostalgia, if I factored that in, it would definitely be Gurren Logan. I think the story it told was just amazing with how... Everything just comes together. Um, other notable categories, Code Geass, Death Note, obviously. Um, can I throw in Fate Stay Night for the fact that I'm going to eventually watch the anime, so it kind of counts? And game as well, so I mean, I guess that, that technically counts. Uh, Spice and Wolf was really good as well. Uh, I like the economy of it, actually. <laughs> Unironically, I like the comedy of it, or the uh, economy, economic parts to it. Uh, favorite game? Uh, I would probably say Knights of the Old Republic 2. It is one of the ones I've probably played hundreds of hours of. I would probably even guess a thousand. I've played that so many, many, many times. It is an old game that used to scare me when I was a kid, and I just played it every year since I was like eight and I'd still ugh, the last time I played it was probably three months ago I was just so ingrained into me of why I love it the way it's told all the characters in it I even played the shitty Xbox version of it that's just absolutely got awful is it even Xbox I think it was original Xbox or was it 360 at that time I think it was just Xbox but, I mean, I played that version. It was just, <laughs> there were glitches everywhere. It was terrible. But, God, I loved it. So much content that could have been there that wasn't there that I'm playing now. And it's amazing. It's mind-blowing. I highly recommend it. Favorite genres uh, in general. Mm, let's say... Huh. Probably strategies. Uh, I, I'd say favorite genre in, in in general strategies. I like the grand campaigns as well of really in-depth strategy games as well. Even though they kind of get a little bit tiresome after a while, but I like that full domination factor. It really gets competitive. Do you plan on bringing other games to your channel aside from anime-themed ones? Yeah, sure, I'd love to. I'd, <laughs> I have plenty of plans for other stuff. I mean... Whatever you guys want. Suggest anything at all, and I'll probably get to it eventually. Uh, other ones off the top of my head that I can think of that aren't Jap Japanese or anime in general. Um, I can't really think of any, like, immediately. Even probably thinking on it for a couple extra weeks, I probably wouldn't come up with any. But yeah, I mean, at any point, whatever. The strategy games, I'd love to do those. Uh, I could do a very long playthrough of one of those if people are interested in it. 
Do you play or are interested in a Movage aside from Fre Fade Grand Order? If so, what game? <laughs> uh, you doubt my powers when you say what game. Uh, yeah, I play about five right now. Uh, Azure Lane, I've gotten back into it. I used to play back on the Chinese server in February of 2018. In early December, I used to play it then. And then I stopped, and then the English release, I decided to pick it up again because Enterprise is such a cute damn girl. Same with Hornet. I love both of them. I love all my Yorktown carriers, but I'm, I'm a slut for uh, Pacific World War II history. <laughs> I am. So, I get such a fucking hard on for that stuff. Um, Fate, uh, Fire Emblem Heroes. I've gotten into that as well. Haven't played a Fire Emblem game, so it's like, I don't know these characters, but I know they're cute, and it's a fun game, and I'm pretty lucky at it. Uh, Drag Alia Lost, that literally just came out a couple days ago as of recording this. So I've got, <laughs> I've got that fresh release as well. Um, Grand Blue Fantasy, I think is what it's called. GBF for short. I you, I'm so used to calling these by their uh, initials. I've gotten into that as well, but I'm just grinding to buy a waifu in there, and then grind for another one. So I have a few of those. <laughs> People who want to watch videos of that, I'd gladly do it, so I can just justify playing them more. Are you going to finish all localized fan translated Trails games? As of now, there are seven in English and two to will still to be localized. I love to. I've loved the story so far, and I like the difficulty I've chosen on hard. Maybe one day I'll do a nightmare run of my favorite trail game, but we'll see. Uh, I definitely would be interested in it. If people are interested in watching the other stuff in the series, I would love to get to it. Especially if they're newer characters that are interesting as well. If we get some more Estelle and Josh, I'm not going to complain either. What are some of your favorite story moments in all VNs you've played in your channel? What are some moments you generally didn't like? Oh boy, let's go ahead and take a trip down memory lane. I'd say one of my favorite moments in Higurashi was i want to say the ending obviously because uh, obviously um but i would say a genuinely happy moment would be after game five no six the six arc when they got out of the school and everyone was safe i was actually genuinely very very happy genuinely Obviously, it didn't end well because <laughs> there's still a few more to go, but I was very, very happy. One that was upsetting was when Keiji remembered his memories. One of the times that I very, I, I did cry, and I, oh, that, I didn't like that. I didn't like that because it's just so painful. Umineko. One of the moments I genuinely liked was uh, Ava's uh, Web of Truth. Red Truth, that is. It was so beautifully well orchestrated. I loved it. It was such a very, very satisfying moment. Um, didn't like... I didn't like how accurate I was to uh, Erica. Uh, I didn't. I genuinely didn't like uh, Ava to Triss, uh throwing Rosa around. I really didn't like that. I didn't care for the that those scenes. The over-the-top, brutal scenes like that... Not a fan. Oh, me on torture. I'll throw that in there as well. As uh, genuinely dislike stuff. Ah, but anything else I didn't like in other games I played? Fate. I love the Archer versus Shiro fight. One of my favorite moments. And I didn't like. I don't think I have too many that I just genuinely didn't like. And I thought we were poorly executed. I'd have to get back on that one. Oh, I think that's fun. Uh, here's some more personal ones. I'm going to answer all of them. Uh, do you have a console? Which I do, actually. I have quite a few. I am a nerd, after all. So I want to go just start down the list. I have an uh, N64 that I got from when I was a kid. From where I used to play it as a kid. I have a Super Nintendo, GameCube, Wii, because 
some people bought it in my family, and it's just there. I don't use it, though. Xbox, Xbox 360, PS4. Handhelds, I'll count those as Game Boy and a DS. Uh, <laughs> I have quite a few. It just <laughs> That's just off my ta- top of my head, and I know I'm missing one. And someone's going to probably just say, like, just a really standard console. And I'm going to be like, oh, duh. But the PS4 was my first actual PlayStation I've owned. I have played a PS2 before, which they were fine. It was fun. I didn't like it too much. Didn't like the controller setup. Still really don't. But <laughs> I played a lot of Xbox when I was a kid. A lot. And a lot of GameCube. I can. <laughs> I played so much damn Nintendo that <laughs> I could run a whole channel on it if I could. Because it's just so much fun. Uh, what's your age? I am 21 years old. Just turned 21 a few months ago. I shouldn't say just because it's been a while. But yeah, I am 21, so I can legally drink. So when I say I'm drinking, I mean I'm drinking. How do you manage your time playing games? And by that, I just I mean just how about how much time you dedicate to one game in a single day before moving to the next one, or do you play a different game each day? It depends. Uh, <laughs> this is a lawyer answer right here. It depends on what the schedule is looking like. When I'm, If I'm really cramped on time, which I've been for the last couple of days, I'll play 30 minutes of every single game. 30 minutes to an hour of every single game. If it's trails, I'll probably go for an hour and cut that down, it'll end up being around 30 minutes. The other two I'll record for about 30 minutes as well. If I'm really crunched on, to- crunched on time every day and edit them all in one day, which is why sometimes the videos will be later or YouTube's just being a dick. Otherwise, I look to record about two to four hours every day of one game. And sometimes I'll try to push two in there, but obviously I'm, I'm still human. I still have to socially interact with people. But if I'm ahead, I'll usually do two, three hours of a game every day. So let's say I'll record two to three hours of Super Heavy on Monday. Tuesday will be Ace Attorney. Wednesday will be Trails. And then I'll just go through that cycle. Because it will be enough to just keep going with 30 minutes a day. Moving on to the next question. Who is your least favorite fictional character of all time? This is a hard question. I don't really have... The only person that's really popping into my head after I've been thinking about this for a little while would probably be Nina from Code Geass. I do, I do, oh, God, I fucking despise her. Every single part of her character I hate and just loathe. So I'd probably say her, even though that's really a shitty answer, to be, to be honest. I just... If it's a character that you're supposed to hate, I just usually don't tend to hate them too much. And also, are the Higurashi Extra Arc playthroughs potentially coming out soon? Probably. I will probably get around to those soon. Um, looking for when everything gets nice, edited out, everything's clean. Ideally, it still would be an official release, but let's be honest, that's not going to happen for another four years. So maybe once I'm in the mood for more 07 stuff, when like the extra... 07 stuff drops, which apparently is coming up soon. So, will be interesting to see. Are there any VN slash anime that you consider to be mediocre, possibly okay, but had the necessities to make it great? If so, what are changes you would have done to pr- improve it? Oh, backseat rider time <laughs> to engage. I don't want to say something's like meaty mediocre. So I'll just refer, I'll just say that I think it could have been better. I'll start with like a VN uh, with Danganronpa. I think it could have been better if they did a lot less of the repetition of the dialogue that really burnt me out really fast. So I think if they just had cut down that down by half, and then it would have been it would have been better. Anime wise. That's hard. I don't know how I'd rewrite shows because there are a lot of ideas that I think would be good, but at the same time, I don't know if it would be good. Um, let's go with something that people usually don't talk about. When... Uh, let's go Gantz, actually. And that was a anime produced a while ago that I watched it. It was a very weird show with a lot of things in the anime that were really poorly done. 
I think if they'd taken time to really start fleshing things out and not rush through a lot of their things and stories and just have a lot of seemingly random stuff happening and a lot of less of just the weird shit and just random nudity happening, I think if they cut that out, it would have been a lot better. So slow down the pacing on that, release more episodes. I would have loved to see that thing keep going in animes or anime format in different seasons. Uh, the art, obviously, it's a little older, so. Once you start a visual novel on your channel, would you finish it even if you feel like you're not liking it? Uh, yeah, I mean, it depends. <laughs> well, these are going to be it depends answers. Uh, um, he, I haven't dropped a visual novel yet at all, so <laughs> knocking on wood that none's going to actually do that at any point. But if it got to the point where I was literally having zero fun, that it doesn't look like it's going to improve at all, I'll probably really highly consider canceling it. If I if it really was just bothering me to the point that I despised and didn't want to continue it. But that's about it. Which fictional character do you identify with the most? I don't... I don't want to say I identify with any character really because none really capture oh god i'm gonna sound so fucking stupid none really capture my mindset but uh i really identified with kaito in v3 i felt like he and i just have a lot of similar mindsets on a lot of things it just felt really good to have him in a scene and I would say I resonated really, really well with him. Top three of your favorite visual novels so far. What are the three visual novels I've done on my channel? I don't, wa I don't really read visual novels on my own part. Uh, it's just, you know, kind of not something I'm really into, honestly, as a genre itself. Which is going to sound odd when I actually do most of them. But I would say probably... Fate, Umineko, and Higurashi. No particular order, really. It's hard to rank against each other, especially Higurashi and Umineko, because they're just so similar, but yet so different at the same time. So I'd say those would be my top three. I don't really read visual novels outside of it, so I'd say those are probably also the top ten. <laughs> just those three. What kind of anime do you watch? Like specific genres, and what are your favorite ones? Uh, I don't really have a specific taste. Uh, I watch basically anything that sounds interesting the plot-wise. I will watch something as mindless as uh, High School of the Dead and then follow that up with like Code Geass or something. Uh, especially once I was first getting into anime. I, j I watched literally everything that sounded interesting. And you'll give me a comedy, give me a uh, high school romance... Give me a tragedy, sad story, sci-fi, all of those just give me anything. So I would say what I watch is anything with a decent plot. <laughs> Even then, decent plot. Mainly it's characters I look for in any story. I think characters are what drive the story the most. So even a subpar plot can be really helped along with amazing characters. An amazing plot can be destroyed with horrible characters. That's my mindset on it, at least. Favorite ones? Uh, I've already kind of answered this back there, so. Next question. Are traps gay? And why? Or why not? I would say if you're a guy and you're looking for a girl and you know the trap has a dick, then yeah, you're probably gay. Or at least you, you like some dick in your life. If you know they have a dick and you still want to pursue them even if they have the dick. If you're a girl, wouldn't that make you straight? It all comes down to knowledge, really. If you don't know there's a dick, then you're not gay. It's impossible to be gay at that point. If you know they don't, if you don't know they have a dick, it's impossible. You can't be judged for that. But if you know and you still want to get down and dirty, then yeah, you probably are. 
Number two, which Velvet Room Attendant did you find the hardest to beat in Persona? I'd say Persona 5 with Caroline and Justine. They were really frustrating with the time limit, or turn limit at least, and just the instant down. It was just uh, frustrating as hell to deal with. Because I'm not someone that's gonna cheese and just use someone that's broken character-wise, because it's fucking stupid. I actually want to beat the game with the characters I like. But that's just me. How can your luck, gotcha luck be so good? It's unreal. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. So I might get a couple characters off of free pulls. So I might get some of the characters I just happen to really like the most. It's not that bad. Sure, I might have beaten the odds of like, you know, an 11% and end up pulling like six of them and out of a 10 card slot, but really it's nothing, nothing too good. But if you want a true reason as to maybe why that might be happening, I can just leave you with some quality words of wisdom that will go down in history. The tree of luck must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of waifus and best girls. Basically how it goes. That's why my luck's so good. All my waifus die, and that's where the luck goes. You mentioned before that you don't like rhythm games. Why is that? I just suck at doing them. I, I, I usually hyper-focus on one thing, and when it has me doing other things at the same time, I just tend to hyper-focus on like one line or something and don't look at the other stuff. I, I'm really bad at looking the whole big picture. What's your favorite JRPG you've played and why? I played Final Fantasy when I was younger, when I was a kid at least. So I'd say probably, I don't even remember which one I was really young. Whenever I was still like on the Super Nintendo, whatever one that would have been, old, old as shit. Uh, I wouldn't say that was my favorite one, though. Uh, JRPG that I like the most. God, can I say Trails at this point? I I just, I had a little experience when I was a kid. And for the truest sense of JRPG, I haven't really played too many of them. So I would probably say Trails at this point. And I'm having a lot of fun with it. Obviously, pandering answer. What's your favorite VN you've read and why? I danced around this topic before, but uh, would I put fate over Umineko and Higurashi? Maybe. Let's do that. I don't like putting Higurashi or Umineko over each other, so I'll just have them tied at two, fate on number one. I really liked the themes it handled. I liked how the story progressed and the characters involved. I liked how well-written the limited scope of characters was. I really enjoyed that. I liked the flushing out of old heroic spirits and all that stuff. I thought that was really, really well done. What's your favorite line, novel, manga, or comic you've read and why? I don't read any of them. I have never read a light novel, manga, or comic. I don't like the way mangas and comics are written. I don't like the whole speech bubble, all of that stuff. I just never have gotten into that kind of style personally. When I was a younger, I had trouble reading and the people said, oh my God, you should totally read comics. It's easier to get reading skills, blah, blah, blah. I didn't, I'd never liked them. I ended up just reading good books instead, good fictional books instead and got used to it that way. What's your favorite movie you've watched and why? Ooh. Um, for favorite movies, I would probably say it's a battle between Seven with Morgan Freeman in there. So I'm forgetting the main dude's name. Oh my god. Oh, Jesus. Pitt. Brad Pitt? Is it Brad? It is Brad Pitt. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm really bad at remembering names. I'd say probably seven. Um, 300. I think it's all going to be numbers. Or uh, Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith. Unironically, I like that. I watched it a lot when I was a kid. Or younger, I should say. I really like the way it was handled. And all the long-lasting shots. I like the theme of... 
like the deeper themes that are present in it, and it's easy to overlook and re it's fun to extrapolate some of the deeper meanings in it but i would say favorite movie would probably be 300 i like the way it's told i like the story i like the the legendary aspects it has and just how it presents itself favorite book you've read and why Ooh, that's hard that's actually hard because there's been a lot of books I've read, a lot of books I've completely forgotten as well. Uh, maybe The Lord of the Rings, the second book, Twin Towers. I might have liked that the most. I read them really fast. Uh, I'd probably say Twin Towers. I really like that book. I liked how it's written. Um... I still haven't finished a lot of books I want to. A lot of the classics. But I'd probably say that. The Divine Comedy was a really well-written book as well. Really, really well-written. I, I, I like reading that just because it's so wild. But yeah, I'd probably say Twin Towers. Probably. Fade, who do you prefer, Tosaka Rin or Mordred? Oh, my cuties. Don't make me pick between them. That's just mean. But I got to go with Rin. I love my Rin, but I love my Mordred as well. I think there's ways Mordred could be improved. There's not many ways for Tosaka to be improved. Who do you prefer, Erica or Battler? I'd probably prefer Erica. I like her methods more because I'm more close to how I do things. Who do you prefer, Neil or Oliver? Neil, 100%. I love that dude. He's so much fun. Who do you prefer, Akihiko or Kanji? Kanji. I, I like his attitude and his... The way he carries himself a little bit more. I like the story he goes through. Who do you think needs a buff slash nerf? And how would you balance them in a blaze blue uh, cross tag battle? Um... I'd say, obviously, the main offenders, Yuzu, S, and Gordo need a nerf. I'd probably make Gordo just a tad slower with his moves, maybe a slightly less range. S, just reduce everything. I'm tired of dealing with her. Yuzu, reduce her range, and I'll be happy. When will you make videos of the game's episode story mode? You've been delaying it for a while. I'll just keep delaying it. I don't know when I get around to it. <laughs> Probably after some 07 stuff, so pretty far into the future. Just haven't gotten around to doing it, really. When will you get a Discord profile picture? You've been delaying it for a very long time. I don't know what you're talking about. I have one. What are your top three favorite songs from video games? This is impossible to answer. Like, oh my god, how am I supposed to come up with video game music that I like? Okay, I'd probably say one of them would be uh, Persona 4, Face Myself. Or Face, uh, I think it's Face Myself. A, a name similar to that. I would say that one was one of my favorite video game songs, I'll Face Myself. I love the way it's just put together. Everything about it is just amazing. Keeping it in line, Persona 5, with the rainy mood uh, music. Whenever it starts raining beneath the mask, I think that is just amazingly done. It's such a beautiful piece of music, Be beautiful song. I love the way it just everything flows together. Something I've done probably the last Steinsgate ending Steinsgate zero ending music that was really really good really good or maybe a Steinsgate opening like the Steinsgate opening first one I thought that was really well done as well so probably either one of those maybe Steinsgate zero opening as well yeah, it's Steinsgate opening one of those is pretty good what are your top three male characters from any media any media it's probably all going to be anime related because let's fucking be honest. Um, I love my Kamino. 
I loved his character. I loved the way he, everything about him was larger than life and absolutely amazing. I loved him. Of course. Um, next character, male. God, it's <laughs> this is the hardest part coming up with male characters. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say I don't care about them. Um, maybe light and um, I really liked Ku. Ku was fucking awesome. Let's go, Ku. Kuhulaina. Let's go with him. Top three female characters. Ah! Now you're. Now this is the hard. That's the hard part. Um, I'd say Mio and Ren and quick round. <laughs> I say this is the hard one. I'm gonna knock this out in one more. I just need one girl. Coming up with all the other. Mordred. Let's go with Mordred. I liked all three of them. But yeah, you know what? I'm just going to stick with that. Not even going to think about the rest of it. What factors do you consider the most when choosing a waifu? This one's going to be a long question, a long answer. So what I look for mainly is personality. I would say is one of the first and foremost things I look for. And people are going to immediately jump on me because in Discord I uh, rate waifus and pick best girls immediately just off their looks. But you can easily tell looks on a waifu due to how they stand, how they look. Usually facial expressions help as well. That usually helps how their hair looks as well. I just want to also add and address, there's an unsubstantiated rumor going around about me liking um, girls with blonde hair. I don't know where this rumor got started. I really don't. And I'm very impartial. When it comes to hair color, I might like one or two that just so happen to be blonde. It's it's absolutely ridiculous, and spending even amount of, any amount of time even discussing this is kind of ridiculous. So I just want to say I do not have a preference for blondes, and any claims to the contrary just completely false. And I don't know where you get them from. It depends how <laughs> it depends what they're wearing, really. And that's what really. I, I wouldn't say it's the most important, but it's a very big factor. And hairstyle. I don't really like the short hair. I really like longer hair. If they're going to pull it back, then shorter hair is not as bad because it's not as noticeable. When you get a girl in twin tails and a ponytail, it looks very good. Or just straight long down hair down to their mid-back, I would say. Maybe just past their shoulder is another good look. I would say anywhere in that range is probably really good. Maybe even down to their ass. It gets a little long after that point, but that's usually my hair range. Usually, always ex uh, exceptions apply. Uh, you want to look if they're, you know, if they got good proportions. I'm not going to say you need to have big tits or something. You want good proportions. You want something that looks, I don't want to say natural because obviously it's an anime girl. But you want something that's not completely ridiculous, that doesn't fit her body at all. But you don't want something that's nothing there you want something there so usually if you're gonna go a cup range it depends on the girl but around a b to a d is around my range i would say you want to make sure as well same with the thighs and the ass you're just gonna want a nice proportion same with the tight stomach you can't go wrong with that and mm, amazing but that's usually what i look for clothing attire i t typically like a nice casual look usually just a t-shirt Short shorts or a short skirt, um, longer socks to the thigh, mid knee, not a bad look either. Maybe even a crop top, that's a good look as well. Also bikinis, always amazing. What are your <laughs> after all that? What are your kinks, fetishes, and turn offs? I'll start with turn offs because it's the easiest one. I would say anything involving a. Uh, Bodily functions that go inside a fucking toilet because we're not fucking degenerates. I don't need to be pissed on. I don't need to be shit on. Get that, get it out of here. That can, no, that's just fetish. That's a complete turn off. Uh, food as well. Chicks with dicks, not into it. No. The, the only dicks I care about right now are mine. My uh, dick I care about is mine. Don't have multiple dicks. 
Well, I'd say those are like immediate turn turn off. So vor as well. Uh, any kind of insertion of objects into orifices that don't have anything to be going into them is ugh. rods, needles, all of that shit. No, no. Harry as well. You can miss me with that. I. We live in a society. You can shave a little bit. Uh, fetishes and slash kinks. I'm gonna just lump these into together because they're basically the same thing. Uh, this is actually really hard because it's hard to analyze, uh, analyze your own fetishes and kinks and, and turn-ons. It's really hard to, so I'll, I'll do my best. Uh, I'd probably say, I, have a, I do have a fucking fetish for tight stomachs. I will say that. That's a hundred percent guarantee. I really love it. Another fetish kink, I guess, would be uh, when a girl pulls her hair back. It's such an alluring look, and it's so beautiful. It's one of the most beautiful things. I also, it's weird. I kind of like uh, more nervous looks on them as well. Maybe some hesitation. Kind of like that. I kind of like the uncertainty. Um, I really like uh, knee socks or thigh highs as well. I like just to seeing a little skin, not all of the skin. It's great look, great look. Um, any special fetish that I have though? Apparently, I like phoenixes, girl, monster girls now, or bird girl. Apparently, I d didn't know I did until I got one in a gotcha, and I'm like, oh my god, she's so fucking cute. So I realized I, I guess I like bird girls now. I. Who knew? That's a relatively new one, though. Outside of that, just to further clarify in some of my fetishes, I should say, and turn-ons, uh, let's go with... I really like... This is gonna sound off. Whenever in media, you need to have a bigger dick. And to clarify why, it's... When it's when it's just small dicks, it just... It looks terrible to me. I hate the look of it in any VN. Even in regular porn as well, just it looks terrible. Just absolutely awful. And I cannot stand it. Other things, you know, schoolgirl uniforms does look good. I like the I like the skirt look with the good old thigh highs. Amazing combo. Pulled back hair, amazing as well. Um other stuff. You know, some more male dominated stuff. I kinda enjoy that more, I would say. Uh, you gotta keep the normal stuff, I, I, I should say. Any g normal general fetish that you would enjoy. Get your impregnation. <laughs> Definitely like that. Though, if you've heard me and talk about my desires of being a father, you'd probably <laughs> already understand that that's probably a fetish of mine. Uh, <laughs> what do you think is the coolest, not necessarily the most useful weapon? Um, Gilgamesh is Aya. That shit is amazing. I love the concept of just ripping the world apart. <laughs> I think it's just amazing. I love that kind of stuff. Do you believe in God or any other great being according to your religion? I'd like to. I'd like to believe there is a higher power for the sheer fact that believing that we are all on a just a rock floating through space with no purpose, no greater meaning in life, and that we are only destined to live X amount of years and nothing afterwards is really depressing to really think about when you realize just how meaningless you are in society and even in life in general and the greater universe. When you start thinking of it that way, it's really easy to start checking out of the world and really just saying nothing matters. And I think that's a really negative mindset to get into because it's very easy just to say, what, what difference does it fucking make? I don't care. So I don't like getting in that mindset. So I try to avoid thinking about that. But I would probably say I'd hope there's a higher being, personally. You know, live like there is one. If there isn't one, oh well. Like that kind of deal, I'd say. Are you a procrastinator? <laughs> yes. Obviously. <laughs> oh, horrible. If you were in a killing game similar to one of the ones in Danganronpa, what would you try to do? Uh, I'd immediately try to start getting an in-group with a, f a fair amount of people. 
You already know who I'd associate with. Well, obviously the cute ones. Uh, also the dudes. I would get it, uh, familiar with all the strongest guys to look the most capable and get a very strong friendship going. I have a very natural ability to be more open with people. I'm very... I'm very warm towards people for some fucking reason. I hate people, and yet people love talking to me. I don't understand it. But I, I just apparently come across as really understanding and really opening. Or open. So I'd probably do it that way. Um, if someone killed my best girl, I'd, <laughs> I'd kill him. And, and just kill everyone else in the game. Fuck it. I got nothing else to live for at that point. If I die, oh well. That kind of deal. I'd make sure my girls stay alive. I'd want them to live. If you were in a battle royale, like the Hunger Games, for example, how would you try to win? Well, the first thing is the battle is won outside of the games. That's the key point that I don't think a lot of people realize, just how important it is. A lot, of, a big thing was uh, sponsors and how important that is because... And also teams and friendships in there. I think that's one of the most important parts that I wish it was more developed in the stories because I think it's really easy just to overlook them. If you have a group of eight people, you're not going to lose anytime soon. If you're a rock solid group, it's so much easier to hunt the weaker prey or the big prey that are working alone or just in pairs. It's really easy to overwhelm them by numbers and just kill them off. And then make a pack that once it gets down to the last eight people, you guys divvy up the loot evenly, and you all leave into separate corners, and then you go and hunt each other. One of those deals. But I definitely try to probably pick up a standard swordsmanship, uh, survival camp-wise. Uh, I already know the basics of starting fire, purifying water, that kind of stuff. Joys of living in America when you're in the South. You kind of learn how to camp and do some stuff on your own so i'd already know how i already know how to do a lot of that stuff but i would say you want to specialize in one particular weapon i would say a standard medium range combat weapon uh or slash long range like a bow maybe some throwing knives that wouldn't be a bad idea either throwing knives it's easier to carry around instead of a giant bow because it's hard to carry around a bow when in different environments because you can't actually know what the arena is going to look like. If it's a, a just a sand pit, you're not going to be wanting carrying a bow in a sand pit. You'll want to keep lighter stuff and stuff that can just keep on your side. And if you're out in the open, your range isn't going to do too much. If you're in the forest, it's a lot easier to use a bow because you can climb up on a tree and snipe people down from there. Just hit them in the throat while they're sleeping or while they're trying to start a fire waking up. That's when they're the most vulnerable. Do your hunting early morning, late night. When people have their lowest guard, that's when you'll get the most kills. That's probably what I'd do. I'd probably focus on swords, maybe branch out and work on my knife throwing abilities as well. And schmooze up to other players and sponsors. Because if I can get fresh water, fresh food through sponsors, I don't have to worry about a lot of things. And I can focus on the game. That's what I do to win. What's your favorite board game? Monopoly uh, and Risk. I love both of them. <laughs> I love screwing people over. I'm an amazing dealer. I make offers people can't refuse at all. Because I'll offer, say, 400 for a railroad. In an early game as well, like once only one's on the board, I'll offer them straight up 300 to 400 dollars for that railroad after they just bought it a lot of people are gonna be like okay you're a fucking sucker here take it i end up getting all four railroads by the end of the game because someone sold it to me for 400 i make my money back in eight turns completely and that's just the best way to do it i feel like once you own all the railroads you start really putting the screws onto the game because that fun that finances your house and hotel building really easily i don't like the utilities i've never been a fan of them i really like the red properties and the greens i think those are really really nice solid property what's your favorite sex position it depends on the day 
Sometimes if I'm feeling more active, I will want to be on top. Sometimes if I've been having a rough day, I don't mind if she, you know, rides it a little bit. So I'd say cowgirl and your standard missionary slash doggy, I would say. Let's go with that. I don't really care too much. I don't get too wild. <laughs> Which do you prefer, summer or winter? Thank God that no dick questions, though. Wouldn't, would have... That would have been fun. Which do you prefer, summer or winter? Uh, it <laughs> depends. I like the summer for the cute girls in cute bikinis. I like the winter because I don't sweat my dick off. Do you have a girlfriend? If so, what's she like? I don't really have a girlfriend, per se. It's nothing serious enough for me to say that she's my girlfriend. I don't, I don't want to get that serious with her. I personally don't think it would last too long. In that sense, if we really wanted to get serious, it also means I'd have to spend more time with her, and I kind of don't. I like keeping it casual right now, at least with her. Oh, what's she like? Uh, she's kind of, oh my god, she's nice and everything. Kind of quiet, a little quieter than I would have liked, personally. Um, blonde, medium hair, uh, wears glasses. Uh, in class, that is. She doesn't wear them outside of class, so just to help see. Um, she's, I think, 19, maybe 20. She's younger than me, I know that. And shorter than me, so maybe 5'4", five, 5'5". Five, five? You can convert that to meters, centimeters. <laughs> what are some of your favorite foods to eat? Uh, your standard, uh, fried chicken. I love it. I could eat fried chicken morning, noon, and night. Love it. What are some of your favorite drinks to well drink? Alcoholic ones count too. My go-to is water. I drink tap water every day in the morning, afternoon, night. I, I drink so much damn water. It's why I never got acne. I never drank soda. I never ended up getting a real bad case of acne when I was a teen. So thankful for that. My skin stayed beautiful. Um, alcoholic ones, I like my Jack Daniels. I like just Jack on the Rocks. I love the taste of it. Oh. That's if I really just have a shit day. Beer, it's if I want to relax. Last beer I drank... Last beer I drank was a Yingling. Good old lager. American lager. Uh, I like the taste of it. Uh, I like the kind of earthiness of the lager. And uh, that's my go-to right now. I think I have 10 drinks of those left. 10 beers left. Out of what I bought. What will? When will you do a face reveal? When enough people complain about it. <laughs> that's when I'll get around to it. What are your PC specs? I have a 970 you know, graphics card. So, you know, decent, not the best, obviously. Yeah, GTX 970, an i7, 4790K, 4 gigahertz, 32 gigabytes of uh, DDR4 RAM, and a bunch of hard drives. That's about it. I don't have, I don't remember what exactly I had. Uh, what countries are you most interested in vis visiting in the future and why? I'm really interested in visiting Europe, um, Eastern Europe, e Europe as well. I just want to see all that nice area. My, a lot of heritage I have is from Eastern Europe, so I kind of want to touch the roots there. And by a lot, I mean like 30%, 30% from Germany as well, so gotta go visit Deutschland eventually as well. Omineko, besides omnipotent, uh, omnipresence, in other words, starting with omni, how would you one beat Featherine? However, she writes me to beat her. That's how I'd beat her. Well, you instantly start when they cry five in Omineko's extra art when they're translating and put all their stuff on hold. Maybe. It depends how far I'm into something. If I just start it, I'll probably put it on hold. Just say, hey, by the way, I'm doing this. If I'm near the end, I'll probably rush through the end of it to get to when they cry five because I do definitely want to get into it when it has an English release 
And if I finish something and I f and it seems when the Cry Five's about to drop, I'll probably just put something on. It. I'll just keep it empty to do it. Do you plan on playing teams other than Yang and Mai? Probably not. Do you plan on ever learning cross combos and more complex combos? Probably not as well. I I just play for the girls. How long in advance do you have? Do you generally record? It depends. I uh, usually I like to keep at least two to four hours ahead. Right now I don't. Right now I'm maybe an hour ahead, but I like to keep it usually two hours ahead of time. Most importantly, what's your favorite Kanye album? <laughs> Boy, do I'm glad you asked me this because it gave me an excuse to listen to a bunch of Kanye before recording this. And I have the definitive proofs here. So I'll start with the least and go to the uh, most popular, I'd say. I'd say probably Life of Pablo is at the bottom for me, personally. Because I just... I felt like there are... I, I want to preface this. I like songs on every single album he's done. Let's just put that out there. He puts out some fucking fire albums. I like all. I like all a lot of songs on all of them. But I'd say Life of Pablo has the least amount of songs I like. I like Facts and Faded. I think, or just Fade. I like those two songs on there. Yeah, just Fade. Jesus. I, I like the way it flows on there. I'd say that's right after uh, Life of Pablo. The next one would probably be 808 Heartbreak. Um, I didn't like the autotune in a lot of parts of it. But at the same time, I still liked it. Just not as much as the next one, which would probably be College Dropout. I really liked College Dropout. It was really well put together. I liked a lot of songs on there. Next one would probably be My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasies. I thought that was mm, hard-hitting. Very, very well done. Late Registration. There's so many classics on there. I just can't put that any lower. Next one would probably be Graduation. I love nearly every song off Graduation. It is, it's one of my favorite albums he's done. The second favorite, in fact. He's put out so many songs on there. It's easier to say the songs I don't like off Graduation. I can put on the entire t uh, CD of Graduation, the entire album, and listen to it the full way through. And maybe want to skip one song at most, maybe two. Then this is going to kind of be like a little bit of recency effect but I really loved Ye. Ye was probably one of is probably the favorite album he's done of mine or the, the album he's done that I've found the favorite. I like every single song off Ye. Every single one. There is not one song on there that I did not like. So I have to go with Ye. I, I literally can listen to the whole entire thing on repeat. The entire album on repeat and never get tired of it. The way it's put together is amazing. I thought about killing, I thought about killing you. Perfect way to start it. Goes into yikes, all mine, wouldn't leave, no mistakes, ghost town, violent crimes, jammed, pack, all of them should be classics. And if you haven't done yourself a favor and listened to Ye, you need to listen to Ye the entire thing through, unedited, because if you listen to a Kanye song, that's edited, you're doing yourself a fucking disservice. You need to listen to it unedited, the raw stuff. And it's, mm, can't go wrong with Ye. I think it just brings so many things together from different albums that it just makes it, I think, the best album he's ever done. So, but that could be a recency effect. What's your favorite kind of visual novel? For example, a Chunage like Fate Stay Night or something more mystery focused like Umineko and Danganronpa. I don't really know what kind of visual novels they are. Uh, so let's just say one with a good story. <laughs> good story, good characters is really what I look for. I don't really have uh, genres I look for. So I would probably say which does their job better. I would say Fate Stay Night does it a little bit better maybe than Umineko. 
Maybe. I don't know. Is it a favorite kind of visual novel, though? My favorite kind is one with a good story and good characters. Mainly good characters. Who's your favorite character in uh, Fate Stay Night slash Umineko? Putting them together? Uh, that's just mean. Obviously, I'm going to say Ren because I'm highly biased. But if we were to take out waifus, I'd probably say Shiro, to be honest. I really loved his main character. I loved his progression. But, I mean, if I'm going to keep in waifus, then it's Ren. I love the way she was written and how she impacts the story and the way she carries herself, how she deals with her problems amazingly done do you actually enjoy the visual novel medium as a whole or do you only enjoy the vns that are considered amazing while preferring other mediums um you kind of answered it right there i don't really enjoy visual novels so much as a medium i mean i'd like the stories i've done so far so it's kept me interesting i just have a really bad habit of wanting just to skip through stuff a lot if i get bored and doing these videos has helped me not want to do that as much. Is there any character you generally despise in Umineko or any other visual novel that are of uh, notable mention? Uh, I mean Kasumi. I despised her Ava dress. Outside of that, not really at this point. I think it's just, you know, a lot of stuff I say in the heat of the moment is just heat of the moment, fluffed up stuff. But probably not. I don't think I, outside of those two, probably not. You're going to play the new episode of Umineko coming in the winter when it gets an English translation. Definitely. Also, are you going to read the new When They Cry series that it starts this year whenever a new chapter gets released? Or wait until a few years until it's all out? I'll do it chapter by chapter when each chapter gets released. For sure. I, I won't want to sit on that. I'll want to be one of the first ones putting out videos, putting out my theories, improving a lot of stuff right. Any chance that you're going to play Rose Gun Days? It's on the list. Definitely am looking, wanting to do it at some point. Um, not in the near future. There's a lot of stuff going on right now and right in the near future. But at some point, I do want to get to it. Have you watched the Fate Stay Night Ufotable anime adaptation? And if so, how do you think it is? And having played the visual novel first, I haven't started it yet, actually. I still need to. I put a lot, a lot of stuff. I just really don't have a lot of time to watch anime. So I haven't yet. I need to. What inspired you to make a YouTube Let's Play channel? Oh, God. Way back in 2011, 2012. Just watching some of the older channels do it. A lot of them have stopped. Uh, SSOHPKC, Galm, HD. Uh, Sonic Blue Sky, all those really older videos at this point. I mean, you go back years and years ago, probably, you know, two, four years ago, and you'll get a lot more than four years ago. Fuck, I'm getting old. But you can go back way, way back in time and see a lot of stuff that's been done by those characters in those channels and you'll see what really got me into it uh, i'll sham no wow also i got into him i liked his way of doing stuff i mean if you start looking at these videos you'll see where a lot of my style comes from i would say if you looked in all to all of those kind of meld them all together you'll get close to me what inspired you to, uh, what's the story behind your username? How did you decide on that as your channel name? Um, I just used this as my account name, actually, when I was a kid. So this is from like 2011 when I made it, seven years ago. Oh, actually, even then I made a Google account before I made a YouTube account because you didn't have to have a Google account by that point. And that day. Um... <laughs> I didn't make a channel for a while, but the reason for the name, 3012, I've said this before, but it's a uh, locker combination, a part of it that I had in high school. I still have the lock, and I couldn't remember some of the numbers, so 30 and 12 are two of the numbers. I remember the other one, which is 15, 
but I could not remember 30 and 12. So that's where the 30, 30 or 12 comes from. The nude part comes from a book, actually, part of the Maze Runner trilogy. And um, that's the character that I named after him, after him. I really liked his character. And one of the first characters I really liked. And I thought he did, or I thought he was really well written. But of course, spoilers, uh, you already know how this story ends. So I don't even need to say anything else besides that. You know how the story ends with characters I like. Not even in the third one, just the second one. Glorious. What's your favorite fruit? Uh, pineapple is really good. Apples, uh, I would probably say an apple. I really like green apples. I could eat those like candy. I eat the whole thing as well. <laughs> that good. What's your favorite sex scene in media? I don't really have a favorite one because I don't know how I would define favor in this instance. Would it be, you know, what got me the most aroused, what I thought was the well, most well done? I can't really recall any sex scenes that really stood out to me. And what can be considered like a sex scene. So I don't really have an answer for that. I'm sorry. Um, but I just, I don't read or even watch a lot of sex stuff that isn't just so mainly focused on sex. So I can't really think of anything in particular that really stands out to me that's really well done. Order from highest to lowest, Tosaka, Ilya, and Mordred. As other people pointed out, I wouldn't put Ilya on the list. And he'd put her in last because he's a, she's a daughter instead of a waifu. And then someone else suggests Kagami. Even if you put Kagami or and Mammon later on, putting Mammon in is actually a really good point, and I will do that actually. But I uh, said the original part, Ilya is last, obviously, because she's a daughter, not a waifu. Then Mordred, then Tosaka. I've already explained that. Put in Kagami instead. Kagami at the bottom as well. They She just cannot compare. Mammon, put her at the bottom as well. But not as far on the bottom as Kagami would be. Mammon, still a wonderful girl. I love, 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 love my Mammon. Very greedy, and I am happy with that. But I'd still say Mordred, and then Tosaka. Very tight race, though. Which Vincent, you can be more vague, hit you the most emotional, hardest emotionally during recording. That would be the scene where in cage he remembers all of his memories. The worst, worst part. Awful. It was awful. Oh, actually, going back. <laughs> I just remember what is a scene you just genuinely you, you, if you're not you're not liking or a scene you did not like would be uh the scene where Keiichi does not give me on the doll um it, he does not give me on the doll I did not like that at all he can go fuck himself which VN scene has been the longest on your mind after you finish a recording session in case these two are different the one that's been on the mind, my mind the most. I would say Ava's Red Web of Truth. That was on my mind for a really long time, but for different meanings than for like thinking about it wise. But I would say that one was something that I really chewed on for a really long time because I wasn't satisfied with some of my answers on it. And I wanted to keep going through it and again and again and again. So that one was on my mind for a while. Uh, obviously, the me own stuff was on my mind for a really, really long time as well. I mean, I still can remember it vividly. Um, other stuff that's been on my mind for a while. Uh, the Archer vs. Shiro fight. That was on my mind for a really long time. The way the self versus self and all that stuff. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I can eat that up all day long. And for all of the questions that have been asked, I want to go ahead and thank everyone who submitted a question and everyone who has subscribed to the channel. I wouldn't be here without each and every one of you, and I'm very grateful for everything you guys have done for this channel. 
and I hope that we keep going as far as possible. And next stop's a thousand, and I can't wait to hit that. And I hope that everyone sticks along for the ride because it's gonna be a fun one. Make sure to like the video, comment down below to any further questions you might have. I can answer them right now, or I could save them for the next video. Make sure to, sub to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and share some videos around if you enjoyed them. Always get the word out. It's always very, very helpful. Thank you guys so much, and I'm very, very grateful for everything you guys have done. Have a great day. Yeah.